Sarah, I think I can hear you typing. Is that? That's not me typing, but I did unmute, so oh, I can, I can okay. start at any time. Yeah. Maybe that was me typing, but I'm not typing right now. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Joe was talking, and then she cut out, and so. Yeah. Joe, should I get started, or oh, I I'm think so she's going to do a little intro? I'm sorry. I, that was my mistake. Okay. Um, just uh, in in somehow hit my mute button. I, I meant to just say that Sarah McLean and Alex Clark are here today. And Sarah, I'm going to um, let you do a brief introduction, then we're going to take things off to Alex. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. And I hope everybody's doing well during these uh, stressful times. And um, thank you so much to Joe and the State Library for sponsoring this webinar. Um, Joe and Alex are two of my favorite people to work with. And also just um, want all of you librarians to know that um, from the perspective of the access to justice groups, um, all the different stakeholders that we value public libraries so much. We know you guys are a hub for your communities and just a reliable place for information. So thank you for taking the time to listen to us. <laughs> um, Alex and I thought it would be a good idea to begin with just some reminders about that crucial difference between legal information and legal advice. Um, and keep in mind that even at the law library and even in law practice, that is something that we cautiously observe and navigate every day. Um, because you can only give legal advice when it's an attorney-client relationship and it's a licensed attorney. So it's something to be careful about um, for many reasons. So how do we distinguish that? Well, it's not an easy definition or always a bright line. It is a fine line. But in general terms, um, it's and again, this is something we tell people at the law library on a daily basis, we are able to help you locate resources and referrals to do your own research. Um, we can't tell people what they should do or what something means in their case. Basically, if you find yourself in the realm of should or applying a person's individual circumstances to what the law, um, to the structure of the law, framework of the law, then that's going into legal advice. Um, so that's, you know, for obvious reasons, it's important. Um, people are going to trust what librarians say, and oftentimes when people are in a stressful legal situation, they hear what they want to hear. So if there are a couple words within that 10 minutes that they want to hear, that's what they're going to remember and they're going to stick to it. So better that we just get them to some resources where they can find that information themselves. Um, obviously, we don't want to complicate um, or you know, be part of anyone making serious errors in a case. Um, they've got deadlines. The case might be dismissed. There could be wasted time and money. And then there's liability. Um, you know, no one wants to be in trouble legally or with the state bar. So um, always better to be on the cautious side of things. And then of course, you know, we libraries we're all here to support our communities, and we want our communities to have that consistent consistent message that. We're, just, we're here to help and giving reliable information, not telling people what to do. Um, so um, the things to keep in mind, you know, what can we do? We can provide referrals and resources, point people to um, the good websites that you're going to learn about today and to um, the referrals in Montana for legal service providers. We'll talk about free assistance, low-cost assistance, and um, how to assist your patrons to find a private attorney. Um, and then also, again, coming back to that, um, you know, legal information versus legal advice. It may be an area that you've looked at a lot or you've helped a lot of people with. Um, if you are familiar with something, um, you know, if it's something on, of a how-to or you may have some options, you know, that still might be okay, but still be careful with that. Again, if it's venturing into the area of telling a patron they should do something or what something means in their case, then that's going into legal advice and you want to put on the brakes. Um, the overall message today is there are resources. If in doubt, give us a call. 
um, you know, call me, call the law library, call Alex, and then, um, you know, if you're trying to navigate somewhere uh, for something you haven't uh, located before for a patron, or maybe something's different on the website that you used to go to, which often happens, and we'll talk about that today. Um, but yeah, please don't hesitate to reach out, because just like you guys, we're here to help. So um, that, we also have a handout that we can email to everyone that has a little bit more of the guidance on um, you know, what you can do and what are some red flags for that legal information versus legal advice. And then it also has a list of um, go-to resources and referrals. So um, with that, I will pass it over to Alex. Okay, Alex, I'm going to make you the presenter. Hold on. You should have this little box up on your screen, and I'll let you know when we see your screen. We do see your your uh, web page right now. We see while well, we see the GoToMeeting web page. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Joe, and thank you, Sarah, and everyone attending. Um, my name is Alex Clark. I am the Community Outreach Assistant with Montana Legal Services Association. My contact information should be up on the screen for everyone. Um, I'm the person who's been emailing you the legal tip of the week. Um, so thanks for letting me join your community. Um, I just want to say what everything that Sarah said, we really value um, libraries' contributions to, um, you know, a knowledgeable society that knows how to um, find important resources. Um, so thank you all for the work that you do. Um, just a quick recap of what Montana Legal Services does. We're a nonprofit law firm that helps with civil legal cases, so we don't help with criminal um, legal issues. Um, common issues that we see the most common is family law, um, and that includes um, domestic violence in some cases. We also have lots of housing disputes, consumer debt and money problem issues, um, some tribal and Indian law, um, public benefits um, issues, and then um, victims of crime. And then there's lots of other um, things kind of scattered in between that fall within our realm. Um, the way to apply for our services is online at mtlsa.org. We have a 10 minute mobile friendly online intake to get started or to call our helpline. And then of course, visit our office hours, except for right now where we are closed to the public um, out of safety concerns for public health. Um, so without further ado, I'll get started on montanalawhelp.org. Um, this is our website. This is a, basically a template website that's used throughout the, the country by several other states. Um, it's provided by Pro Bono Net, which is a nonprofit, um, the national nonprofit that works on access to justice issues. So the way this website is organized is there's a banner up top that includes all of this information right here that I'll explain a little bit more in detail. There's a right rail along here where you can find some resources. Um, down here, we have our language access. Um, we have staff that speak Spanish, and we also have access to a language line if you're ever um, working with a patron who um, speaks a different language other than English um, and seems like they might have a legal problem, um, we might be able to help. Uh, we have our most popular links and then kind of a, just a alphabetical list of our self-help forms. Down here are more of our topics, feedback. Um, I don't find this section so helpful. The section I find the most helpful is right here with all of our topics and subtopics below. Um, before I get into that though, um, let's talk about the banner. Um, so there's some important links right here on the top um, right, apply for help. This is our page that talks about um, how to access our services. So that's applying. Montana Legal Services. Um, I should say, well, MLSA, we do screen for eligibility based on um, several factors. MontanaLawHelp.org is available with, to anyone with internet access. Um, another helpful link is a self-help self forms. And then we um, also promote um, free legal advice clinics um, throughout communities in Montana that are pretty regular at this point. Um, I generally avoid these buttons right here. Um, they kind of get in the way. Um, and finding legal help, there's only so many resources uh, for legal help in Montana. And I think Sarah and I will be able to cover those um, 
So I don't find it all that helpful. We do have a search bar um, that is now forgiving of typos and it will give you some pretty decent results. Um, but I think the best way to find um, information is through our topics and subtopics. So I'm gonna jump down to our right rail here. We have Live Help. Um, this is a website support service. So if you're having a hard time finding information, people can use this service. Um, you can't get any legal advice or start an intake through that. If you do need to apply for services from Montana Legal Services, you can use this link right here. Um, and then if someone has a question, it sounds like it's fairly straightforward, but you know, they probably really need advice. They can use um, our service askcarla.org, um, which is a secure website. Um, it asks a few questions um, of the users uh, to make sure that they are eligible. And then they get to post um, their legal question to a secure place where volunteer attorneys will check it out and then respond um, through email. Um, so let's go back to the Montana Law Help. Um, okay, so without further ado, let's go into our topics and subtopics. Um, most of all of our um, web pages on Law Help are organized um, through this the structure of topics and subtopics. So as you can see, we already have a COVID-19 topic. Um, these will shuffle around depending on current events. Um, so we have information and resources for taxes, um, family law, housing, debt and money problems, domestic violence, public benefits, American Indian topics, crime victims. And then we have a few more down here as well. Um, so for seniors, so that's a lot of elder law and estate planning. Work and out of work, that's for um, unemployment questions, and then especially there's a focus on agricultural workers. Um, the legal system is general information to help people navigate the legal system, veterans and military, immigration. And then we are testing out a new um, reorganized um, domestic violence section as well. Um, so let's just go ahead and click into the money problems topic here. Um, when you click on a topic, you're gonna to see a whole list of subtopics. Um, these are organized basically in a way so that they, they um, don't look jumbled on the website. It's not alphabetical, so you might need to just kind of take a look at all of them one at a time. Um, Let's go into collection lawsuits. So when you click on a subtopic, and I'm gonna actually zoom out just a little here, you'll get a list of links right here. Um, and for this subtopic of collection lawsuits, it's a pretty broad topic. Um, we're seeing forms here, some information, tips for representing yourself, an FAQ. Um, oh good, there's only one page of information. Um, if you want to quickly find a form, you can go over to the left here and then filter through the form channel. Um, and right here for collection lawsuits, we have district court answer to a complaint, how to ask the court to waive your filing fees, a justice or city court answer form, notice of claimed exemptions. Um, that's when someone has um, money that is protected by the law that gets um, seized by a debt collector. They only have a limited uh, window of time, pretty short window of time to act on that and file um, court paperwork to ask for it back. Um, and then the statement of inability to pay right here. This is a legal form that asks the court to waive um, any court and filing fees um, that are charged for parties in a, in a, a lawsuit um, because of a financial hardship. Um, okie dokie, I think we've got most everything down as far as how we organize our information on Montana Law Help. So I sent out a scavenger hunt um, list about a, a little while ago. So maybe we can just go ahead and get started on that. Let me pull that up here. Maybe. And you should find that in your mailbox. This is Joe speaking. Um... 
uh, email box. I found it this morning from Alex. He had sent it out to the wired listserv. So if you want to pull up your scavenger hunt. Yeah. So let's just get started. Where can I download an interim parenting plan? I should also say um, a lot of times um, there's more than one right answer. And it's a good thing to think about, well, does this person need legal advice or can we just give them a referral to information? Um, so for an interim parenting plan, we don't quite have that up yet at montanalawhelp.org. We're trying to get all of the resources we can. Um, of course, it's difficult to keep track of everything and then all of a sudden we have um, something like a COVID-19 breakout. Um, so for it, what are we, uh, interim parenting plan, I go to a court's website, go to their forms section. I actually probably shouldn't have started on this one because I don't want to steal uh, Sarah's thunder. Um, but you can find parenting um, forms under this parenting plans um, tab and then click over to forms. So let's go to another one that is more related to law help okay so i'm helping someone fill out an order of protection would a pellet gun be considered a weapon for the checkbox on the form that says weapon on property so let's just imagine that a, a patron is asking us this question um what's a good resource we can refer this um this patron to for this question um i would say right now i there's a few issues right now there's a safety concern um and that is kind of the biggest um the biggest concern so what i would do is i would refer this person or i'd ask if they've already spoken with a crime victim advocate crime victim ad advocates are often county employees they're non-attorneys um, and what they do is they help um people who are victims of crime navigate the justice system. They also are really talented and skilled at helping them develop safety plannings or safety plans, excuse me, which is just a personalized plan for them to stay safe that covers really practical matters like where do I go if I'm being threatened? Um, how do I um, protect myself from an abuser? Things like that. Um, we do have information about um, orders of protection. Um, so that might also be a good um, place to go. So let's just search order of protection. Um, we have this order of protection frequently asked questions. Um, this is one of our newly updated resources. Um, most of these have a really quick summary right here. Um, and if it's a really long resource like this, they'll have hyperlinked um, FAQs. Um, so I'm not really finding an answer to this question. Um, so we've already flagged a safety issue. So I think, um, you know, seeing if they've talked to a crime victim advocate to talk specifically about their safety is a good idea. Um, the way to find crime victim advocates is through the Montana Department of Justice's website. Um, and then I would suggest they also apply for Montana Legal Services Association. And then I think, you know, this resource won't answer their question, but it's probably gonna be helpful for them to know. Um, so let's pick another one here. Is there a time limit limit on residential leases your patrons asking you know they want to know can they be longer than a year um, kind of seems like an odd question but you know I think a library is a good place to find that out um, so let me minimize my document here so we're on this order protection article let's look at these legal topics and go to the housing one um, oh, here's a subtopic right here for rental agreements and leases. So what happens if I break my lease? What is an oral rental agreement? When can the landlord raise your rent? Quiet enjoyment.
here we go. I have a month to month lease. Can my landlord make me move in 30 days? That's close to what we're getting at. Um, You know, I think I picked one of the odd ones where it's a very obscure question. We might not have a resource. But there's lots directly. of good resources there, though, Alex. That gives you, right. I mean, you know, your um, just things you can how you can talk to your landlord and um, how often you know people might be wanting a a longer lease in order to fix their rental rate for some reason. And right. So there's some related information there for sure. Exactly. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> so this is a about oral agreements, and basically they say um, what it says right here. Um, so let's go to another one. Oh, here's a good one. I am wanting to get a divorce from my husband. We got married in Washington. He now lives in California. Can I get a divorce here in Montana? I don't own any property, and neither does he. I just need help filling out the paperwork. Um, so there's a lot going on here. Um, what I'm thinking of, and I just want to reiterate, I'm not an attorney, an attorney, but I'm seeing a question about jurisdiction. Um, we don't have the information quite to know if this person's asking if they should, um, if they can file here. Um, so I want to get them some really basic, um, information to begin with. Um, and this patron also needs help filling out paperwork. So there's a couple resources for information. Um, let's just go to our family's topic right here. Um, they want a divorce. So we're going to go to this dissolution divorce topic. And for Almost any family law matter, I would probably start with this ultimate DIY guide to divorce and custody in Montana. Um, it is a pretty hefty resource. There's a lot to get through, but it, it will cover a lot and sometimes it's easier to find things through it. So here's our contents box. Um, let's see, filing for divorce. Let's click on that and see what happens. This takes us down to here. It introduces the um, terms that are used in a uh, divorce proceeding in Montana. Uh, oh, who can file for dissolution in Montana? Right here, we have jurisdiction bolded. So that is a good clue to tell us this is where we need to go. So I would give this patron this article um, for it. Um, they also mentioned needing um, help with the forms. Um, we can, um, per, we have forms on Montana Law Help um, that they can use. They have instructions, things like that. Um, what I'll tell you is when people are in a crisis, like when their marriage is ending or they're losing their housing or they are worried about the safety of their kids, um, paperwork is the last thing people want to do. Um, and it can be even more stressful. So having a warm body helps someone out and even just be really, even just simple reassuring matters like, oh yeah, that says name, that, that means your name, you can put your name there. Um, that can be a lot of help. So what we refer, um, when people need help, you know, in-person help with forms, uh, we refer them to the Self-Health Law Center. Um, currently there's a Self-Health Law Center in Kalispell, Missoula, um, Bozeman, Helena, Billings, and Great Falls. Um, we also have a new service called Court Help Connect, where someone can video conference into a self-help law center staff um, from pretty uh, rural locations in Montana. I don't have all of them on the top of my head, but I'll name just a few, um, Haver, Polson, Anaconda, mm -hmm. uh, Miles City, Glen Dive, and I believe Glasgow, um, and a few more. Um, so let's do one more question here. So Alex, before you do the next question, I, this, oh, yeah. um, I, I, if, if a person, if you're saying if a patron comes in and you want to refer them to one of the self-help centers, uh, mm -hmm. how, how do you do that? How do I do that? That's a great question. So there are a few ways to do that. I kind of want to show off something 
a little cool that we put on our other website. So um, we have montanalawhelp.org, and then we have, which is a website where people can find free legal information and resources. And then mtlsa.org is where our online application is, and it's more of our program website that has our mission statement, um, talks about our partners, things like that. Um, so we're on mtlsa.org. Um, if you go to get help and then locations and local resources, um, look at that. There is a map of Montana. Um, this is organized by judicial, judicial district, so it might look a little bit different. Um, but let's say we're helping out a patron in Haver and they need help with their form. So let's click on this guy right here. Um, so it talks about MLSA services available uh, statewide. We travel regular on a regular basis to that area. Oh, look, we also partner with the Bullhead Community Center in Haver. Um, and down here is a Court Health Connect station. So we're going to click on that. Um, and here are the Court Help Connect locations. And they just need to call the state law, law library and make an appointment um, during regular business hours. So these are actually at libraries. So Yes, um, many of them are at libraries. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this is new information for me. I did not know this. And um, how? So my follow-up question is, if there's a library attend, uh, watching today, um, how can they get added to that list as a video chat? Um, I suppose that's for maybe a question for Sarah, but maybe we can talk about that today. That there might be more libraries interested in being a Court Help Connect station. Right. So. Um, we got specific grant funding, um, technology funding for this um, to place the equipment. Um, if someone wants to place um, something, um, you know, some sort of video conferencing equipment at their uh, library, they should contact me um, because I'm the easiest one to get a hold of. Um, and then I will put them in touch with our development director, Michelle Potts. Um, a really quick an easy fix if you want to increase access to justice in your area is I'm going to find a page on our website right here. We have this legal self-help landing page. Um, so there's a statement of fact, like I need legal advice. And then if you click on this box here, oh great. <laughs> Technology doesn't it. always work. That's just no, especially uh, when you're in a webinar and you're yeah, trying to show it off. Exactly. You can just tell us. There we go. Things. I yeah, need legal go. advice. This will and refer. I just want to point out, part. Alex did a great job here. He just stayed calm, <laughs> refreshed his screen, <laughs> and it worked. Great job, Alex. Well, thank you, Joe. Um, so what you can do is you can um, make a desktop shortcut. Um, to this URL right here, um, and you can pick a icon to have on your desktop, uh, your public use computers, like a, a justice scales or something like that. People can click on it and get started and ready to go. Um, so that is what you can do in the meantime. If you do want to look at getting some ro more robust um, support for your library, uh, we are always interested in partnering with libraries. Um, so feel free to reach out to me. Um, Sarah might also have some um, resources available too. And I think now is probably a good time to turn it over to you, Sarah. All right, Sarah, if you're ready, I'll go ahead and make you the presenter. Awesome, thank you. It is coming your way. Perfect. All right, do you see us? <laughs> yes. So, we all see, right, here is all of you. In <laughs> yeah. Awesome. This is the um, desk book ad that we place in the um, Montana Attorney desk book. It's kind of like a phone book slash legal go-to guide that attorneys get through the state bar every year. But I just thought I'd put it up here for a nice visual, and I would be happy to tailor it for public libraries and send out if you want to put it on your bulletin board or just have it just so people know what does the law library do. Um, but anyway, I thought that would be a fun intro. 
Um, I think it looks fine just the way it is. If you if you email it to me, I'm going to follow up with an email to everybody who's attending today, and then I can place these resources on our website and link to them from the recording too, as a follow up. Perfect. Okay, and then um, I'm going to start with the website, but then I also have this handout that I referred to earlier. So. Um, Again, I'm Sarah McLean, I'm um, the director at the State Law Library. I am an attorney, um, but as you know, we don't provide legal advice here at the Law Library. We assist our patrons who range from the general public to our you know, judges um, finding the legal information that will be useful for what they need. Um, and so the State Law Library manages um, the whole website for the judicial branch. So that's the home page that you're seeing right now. Um, and I should really say that's Kevin Cook for those of you who know Kevin, but I just tell Kevin thing, ideas and then he, he builds all of this. Um, so you can see here at the judicial branch, if you're curious or if people, um, if you have patrons who might be wondering how um, the COVID-19 may impact a case that they have pending, you can come right down here and um, guide them to these memos from Chief Justice Mike McGrath, who's explained the measures that the, um, the courts are, are taking or the guidance that the Supreme Court has given to district courts and um, other municipal justice courts on how to handle um, this situation. But um, so I hope this is a, a go-to resource for you. And I started on the homepage, I wanna point out probably the three primary areas that you will be going to that are all up here in the header. Um, that would be the self-help page, the library, and the forms page. Um, you already had a, a little bit on the forms page, um, but still the other um, tabs and um, icons down here may be of use for you as well, um, just for general education to learn more about the Supreme Court, you can even come down here um, if you're curious and see um, if you'd ever like to watch an oral argument at the Montana Supreme Court, which is fascinating to watch. You can come in here and check their schedule and see what's coming up. And from any location, you can um, watch that um, online. It's a live webcast. So that's a bit of an aside. We'll go back to that home, but um, but really there's really interesting to see all our seven justices and then both sides and just how that how that goes in the topic. So it's quite interesting to me at least. So back to guiding your patrons. So when a patron comes in with legal type questions, um, again, I think that a go-to place is to see if they might be a good candidate for the self-help um, law project that um, Alex also talked about. It's also called the Court Help Program, but they're called the Self-Help Centers located throughout Montana and then um, as the, this list of new um, rural resources. So you can find, you know, search where you are and find the center that's closest to you. Um, and then obviously right now they're just going by phone and email. Um, but um, that's and then the self-help page also has um, a few useful resources, um, some videos that we made last year. There's Alex, there I am. Um, but this uh, legal resources video, it's just a few minutes long, gives a nice overview of the free, low cost, and regular cost resources in Montana. So that can be something helpful for people to know, because we, we do, we have some great resources, but oftentimes people really do, do need to go to a private attorney and this can give them some guidance on calling the state bar and how that works. Um, so again, um, if someone is coming to you with a legal issue, um, if you are hearing things that make you think it's family law, like divorce, parenting plan, child support, um, or if it's a landlord tenant issue, which could be the landlord or the tenant, we assist both, that's a great referral to the self-help center. And even if they call the law library, our main number, and we gather that information too, we'll also help them find um, 
the center nearest them. So um, the advantages of working with the self-help center, again, it's not legal advice, but these are AmeriCorps volunteer members who um, are, are trained. They provide general guidance, help people understand the general process of what's going to go on in a court case, and guide them to the correct forms and packets of information that they need to go through that process. One advantage is, a huge advantage, um, some of our packets for family law are more than 100 pages, and they can get them for free from the self-help centers. They print, they can send them to people, and then um, people can fill them out and come back. The, self the centers can um, provide a basic review, not for content, but for completeness. And they have a little stamp, and that's really helpful for people to be able to, you know, to proceed with confidence in their case. So um, I hope you just keep that in mind. And then as Alex showed you, that landing page, if you guide them onto the landing page, um, that might get them to the self-help self center as well. Um, let's see. So the next page that we saw a bit of is the forms page. Um, and so as you can see, it's organized by topic. Um, and some of them are pretty straightforward. Others. Um, you know, might not be as familiar with topics like emancipation um, or uh, what else, invalidity of marriage, that's Montana's version of annulment. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit about where these forms come from and who do these forms work for generally. Um, so you can be confident that people who are navigating to these forms, the forms have been vetted. Um, just again, keep in mind this is the judicial branch's website, so we're not going to put anything up that we're not familiar with and that hasn't been vetted through um, attorneys, uh, MLSA for certainly, um, and usually judges um, to make sure the content is going to capture everything that's needed in the law and that what judges are going to need to, um, you know, to make a decision or to proceed a case, proceed. Um, get the case proceeding forward. Um, and that can be really complicated. For example, the family law forms um, are, I mean, they have tons of content in there, and that's all based on the statute and what the judges need to make a legal decision in that. Um, I'm on the forms committee, and we've got two district court judges, and they, I mean, the attention to detail, because they know, they know the law and they know it's necessary. So when someone pulls forms, from this, they can feel confident that, you know, that these are from valid resources. Um, it doesn't make it easy, but we encourage people to look here because sometimes if you look online, you'll find our forms that other websites are charging people for. So don't let people pay for forms. Refer them to us. These are free. Um, Free and so vetted. Of, I, I, I just want to yes. reemphasize, um, it's also very easy to find um, uh, forms online that you just don't, you have any idea who created it. And yeah, this, this is really great, Sarah. Exactly. I'm so glad you're spending a little time here. Thank you. Um, and then also, just in general, who do these forms work for? So they'll work for a lot of people, maybe even most people, but they're not going to work for everyone. Um, some people, there will be additional factors um, that, or, you know, that are either complications in the case or the person's just own, um, you know, comfort level with using the forms, where these may not work for them. The, the forms committee, people who make the forms try to use plain language as much as possible, but still legal language is like, a, you know, its own foreign language. So they're not going to work for everybody, and that's when MLSA is your go-to resource. Sometimes the self-help center can help there, but really those very vulnerable cases, um, perhaps if it's, you know, there's domestic violence or someone's really in a crisis situation um, at risk of losing their home or, you know, you know all the various scenarios um, at public libraries. So that's really where MLSA can come in. But many people can get through with these forms um, successfully. So, um, oh, it, so just to highlight a few, um, so as I mentioned last year, we made some videos, um, and that was really um, 
spearheaded by our AmeriCorps uh, Self-Help Center volunteers last year. They were amazing. So um, many of the forms related to the parenting plans um, and this fee waiver form. If someone um, gets on there, they also have a, um, they can watch a corresponding video. But this fee waiver form is an example of a form that can be used um, in any of the courts in Montana, um, and it, it should be accepted by any Montana court. Some courts will have their own version, but this um, should be accepted by any Montana court. So that's just, uh, that's a go-to form that if people qualify, they do not have to pay the filing fees in their case, and that, so the, that filing fee waiver covers the filing fees, and then if they have to request um, service by the sheriff, it covers that fee as well. It does not cover copies. So um, that's another benefit of going to, well, the law library, if you've got a fee waiver, will help you make copies for free. Um, okay, so a couple of other go-to topics, um, you know, child custody, parenting plans, dissolution, divorce, uh, landlord tenant, great resources there. As you saw before, these pages are um, organized with these pads where we generally give a quick caption. We've got the form, um, selective statutes where you can link to some of the relevant sections of the Montana Code annotated, and then other resources um, that will usually take you to the Montana Law Help page and a few other, either legal service, MLSA, or Montana Law Help. So, um, you probably, so speaking of Montana Law Help and then the Law Library pages, they have some overlap, but you can kind of think of it as Law Help is your go to place for practical guidance on almost every civil topic. Um, your go to brochures and, you know, FAQs, those really great resources that explain a topic of law in plain language. And then the law library probably has more of the, a more complete set of the forms. There are many forms on law help, so again, they do overlap, but um, I think the law help has a better um, set, more complete set of guides and um, like FAQs where we have probably a little bit more on some of the miscellaneous forms. For example, um, if we go to civil court forms, um, you can just choose which court you're in and see some of the many forms that may or may not apply to the situation. Um, okay. This is really helpful to see how it's all organized and and because I, I think if I had to come to your website, I might not have thought about clicking on forms right away as kind of a, a good place to start. And, and as you're demonstrating, it's probably a, it's it's a great place to go because you've organized information around the specific topics and it's easy to drill down to your your specific topic. So that's that's really good to know. Thank you. Yes. And. This is um, this website works well even with phones, so we you know you can expand or contract it and still be able to navigate it pretty well. So as we know, most that's how most people are using computers. Um, so I have a question, topic. Sarah. Do oh you, yes. Do you have mm -hmm. scroll down? Do you have a, a form for wills or? Yes, actually, that's the perfect segue. Oh, so good. <laughs> I wanted to mention. Yeah, I, I, was, um, I, I need to update mine. So I was just thinking about it. Personally. Oh, good. well, so that is a, that's one topic, um, and we'll, we'll just, end of life planning or estate planning, probate, those topics, um, we have a few headers in that alphabetical list you just saw, but I did want to cover this because it is one page that is going through some changes, and so for librarians that, that have navigated to this page before for forms like power of attorney, you're going to see that it's it's undergoing some changes in that, and I can explain why. So um, this is a really, really important area of law because people are dealing with their own planning, and then also a lot of people are going through probate where maybe it's not a huge estate, and so it's not really worth 
worth it to them to pay an attorney to distribute, you know, a couple cars and a couple of a checking account. And so, um, and, and as we know, our population in Montana is older. And so it's, it's a huge area of need. Um, at the same time, there, there's some great information, but many of these forms come from the DPHHS legal services provider, which is under the aging services division. And they have had to pull a lot of these forms, um, and they're not sure if they're going to be the ones putting them back up. But as Alex and I both know, um, both legal services and the law library are making a plan of action to replace those forms. Um, we're actually meeting tomorrow to see what's been pulled, what needs to be replaced, and how we're going to do that as quickly as possible. Um, so, um, for example, power of attorney. It's a really straightforward form, but right now, because it used to link to that DPHHS form, um, you're going to get an error. Please know that these are topics that um, the law library helps with. Our reference librarian, Christine Mandeloff, helps with really frequently, and we've actually compiled um, some go-to packets for people just to make it quicker um, response time. But yes, please just uh, have patience while we get these go-to forms back up and um, don't hesitate to contact the law library in the meantime because we are trying to provide what we can. And sometimes this, and of course MLSA um, also does a great job when they're able to take probate cases and that type of case um, and the self-help center with powers of attorney and, and that type of document, but um, the law library is also an easy contact. So, um, so stay tuned on that one. So let's look at that sample will. Yeah, that is not in there. If you, so Joe, say you wanted to work on that this weekend, um, you know, contact us at the law library. We could get you something to work with for now. Um, and we would give you that caveat of this is a temporary, you know, it's um, we can't guarantee it's the perfect fit for you or your circumstances if you have a large estate please go to a private attorney for oh, your will. But you, I really wish you I know. had a large estate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, me too. But, um, but generally what I tell people is this is a sample form, um, you know, for simple, small estates. You can take a look at it and see if it looks appropriate for your situation, that kind of a thing. Um, and then we, I would also probably give the um, contact information for the legal service developer because they do have, um, you can contact them for, for assistance um, with, with that. Um, so I want to move on to a couple. Um, we've gone to up here at the top self-help. We've gone to forms. So let's check out the library. Um, as you can see, we've got our little, um, coronavirus message here. We're still open. Our doors are closed, but we're still open helping people remotely and, um, you know, for, you know, court staff and everything. But, um, we're, we're still doing everything we can without just having our doors open to the public. But we are a public library, um, so everyone is, is um, welcome during regular times. Um, some features that you want to know on the library page at first is the Ask a Librarian. So as I mentioned, that is um, Christine Mandeloff, our reference librarian, who um, she is an attorney. She doesn't give legal advice, again, but she is um, awesome. She has many years practicing with Montana Legal Services and is a great person to work with. So if you click on that, um, you just enter your contact information and a general description of the information that you're looking for. Oftentimes, what um, we re what she responds with um, email is really useful. If people if if that person uses email, because then we can send them links, um, usually like to the Montana Code annotated Montana's laws, um, or we can send them excerpts within the boundaries of copyright from um, our resources to help them, um, you know, do their own research basically. And then um, always we're sending links to the forms page and to Montana Law Help and MLSA. So um, with the Ask a Librarian, this is one person serving the entire state and outside sometimes. Um, and 
those requests are coming in through email, um, this portal, phone, and walk-ins. So depending on what um, the request load is at that time, it may be a couple days, it could be a week or two. And we always um, are in contact with Christine to see what her timeline is, and we try and be as direct as possible with people. And you know, it might be a couple weeks, and so if they're in a real panic, we always give them the other referrals that they should uh, look into in the meantime. So scrolling down a bit, um, we are uh, in the Montana Shared Catalog, so you can always look and see what we've got going. Um, oh, and then, sorry, just on the Ask a Librarian, so um, sometimes I assist with these, and it's any topic you can imagine. People, we've got, I mean, it's a, you all work in public libraries, so you understand uh, what a slice of life might look like, and it's really interesting. We get a lot of questions about guns and, um, oh, just all kinds of interesting things. So it's, um, but Christine does a great job. Um, here, so sorry, now going back to the, lot, the libraries page, um, you can go to the Supreme Court cases search. Um, it is not, that easy. I wish it were easier, but it's the, the state switched um, some things, so it's, I don't know, it's kind of hard to use, but um, you can give it a try. If you can't find a case, call, a, if you're looking for a Supreme Court case or you want to see if the, the Supreme Court, which handles appeals, appellate cases from district court or um, for the most part, um, you can call us and we can do a search either on this site or one of our premier legal databases, which are called LexisNexis or Westlaw. We have both and we can assist by doing a search and sending results or if it's a specific case, we can send that to you. Um, and if you wanted to do your own search, you actually, you have to come into the library. We have public portals for that, um, but they're just on site here. Um, so we can help with case law, definitely. Um, and then for continuing legal education, attorneys can, um, we're a resource for, um, you know, like you were mentioning CEs, Joe, so we have CLEs, and attorneys can come here, but they're available to anyone. Um, we do have a number of online um, programs that are pretty interesting, just if someone wants, um, if they were doing an appeal to the Supreme Court on their own. We've got a CLE that Chief Justice McGrath and Justices Baker and Shea presented. It's really great. So that's some a, a resource that a lot of attorneys use with us because they can get free credit. This and I'll just add we, that since you make those available to anyone, you you could take one of those courses and claim a um, library services to the public credit for your library CE too. So feel free to, to, if you're spending more time at home the next couple weeks, go get some CE. That's awesome. Um, so the Montana resources is also a great go-to page because it breaks up the, you know, between the judicial, executive, and legislative, and then the more, the older documents of what, you know, all the law resources, Montana law resources. Um, I usually come here, so for judicial, we have our, um, you know, you can find Supreme Court um, rules, excuse me, cases, but you may also want to find some of the rules. The Supreme Court also um, makes orders for certain rules on things like appellate procedure, other um, areas of civil procedure, like in all the different um, levels of court. They also make all the um, rules about um, attorney admission um, and that type of issue, practicing law, judicial standards. Um, so that's a little bit more, you know, advanced topics, but um, it's still good to know. On the legislative branch, um, you know, the MCA is the go-to, but if you have someone that is looking for legislative history, have them give us a call. 
Um, Rita Gibson, that many of you may know, is our um, go-to. I think she's one of the go-tos in the state about legislative history. We have many on file that we can assist um, you can use, but you have to call or come in, um, or um, Rita can guide you in conducting your own. So it's another great resource there. Um, other reasons why you might want to contact us is if one of your patrons is, is on a legal topic and they just need something a little bit more advanced, we have an amazing collection. Come in if you're in Helena. We'll give you the quick tour. Um, we have all kinds of resources and treatises that can just, from the very practical to the very, very specific. Just for a couple examples, I love the motions practice book. I mean, it's it's updated constantly. It's really great if somebody is having to draft their own motion. We can it just gives basic guidance, um, practical guidance. Or we have the legal encyclopedias, such as the American Jurisprudence. If somebody just needs an overview on a specific topic, it's it's it is a legal encyclopedia. So it gives you a general overview of that topic, and then um, a lot of suggestions of case law or other areas where they can go and get more in depth. Um, so as we're getting close to the hour, um, let's see. I just wanted to go quickly on that handout that I mentioned, if that sounds okay. Yes. Um, which I'll send, okay, awesome. Which I will send to people. So on one side, it's that kind of legal information versus legal advice, just some you know general guidance, and then a non-exclusive list of go-to resources. Again, we've got Montana Law Help and the Self Help. Center at the top. You already heard about MLSA, Ask Carla and the Law Library. The State Bar has some great resources. Um, MSU Extension is also a really excellent resource for articles on estate planning. Um, if you, you know, book, want to bookmark the code MCA on your, um, you know, your computers, that's always helpful. DPHHS has some some great resources, um, as I mentioned, the Legal Services Developer, or um, Child Support Enforcement Division had some great information as well. And then the Montana Department of Justice also has um, some interesting information for victim resources, like protection orders, or if someone needs to modify a protection order. And a question that we get a lot here in Helena is for people that are registered offenders, but they're eligible to request um, to be taken off that list. And the Attorney General, Department of Justice, um, is in charge of those forms, so you can find those there. You don't have to remember all this stuff. That's what the law library is here for, but I will send you a couple of these handouts, um, but just keep in mind. And if you do give us a call, um, you know, and you are a public librarian, let us know on the phone. Um, I mean, er the Ask a Librarian service is, you know, is excellent, but if if you need an answer and you don't want to wait two weeks, let us know. Hey, I'm at the such and such library. I'm just looking. I just need help guiding a patron, and we'll get you where we'll help you get to where you need to go. Um, I have not seen any comments come into the chat box, or I, I, but you guys have been really uh, tooling through. Uh, um, I know I've been like leaning forward and paying attention, and I just want to reassure everybody that uh, I have I have collected the the two, um, the, the URLs you guys have been talking about, courts.mt.gov slash library, mtlsa.org. And I'm going to send these out to everyone who's attended today. And if you are watching the recording, I will have contact information and um, links to resources in the description of the video. So go back to the description of the video and you'll see those links. So uh, thank you, both of you, uh, Sarah and Alex, for taking the time today. And um, just, I have one just quick question. It, you note know, somewhere on this page, Sarah, you have, it says use your library card. Um, who, who can get a library card for your library? Oh, great question. And I do have a cool update to that. So okay. um, I've been here three and a half years and the policy has always been that we issue library cards to um, obviously court uh, court staff, um, state employees, members of the bar, and um, well, other members of the legal community. So if you're a paralegal with a firm or working for an attorney, you can get a card. We have other 
um, other categories like students, um, obviously public librarians could call us and get a card, um, but we recently worked with the MSD um, so that, because we have a very extensive ebook collection with Lexis, so people could be doing some major research, like in our library from home, but they need the card, and so we, um, although the checking out is somewhat limited, we have interlibrary loan, and but we do have some restrictions on our, you know, our checking out privileges. Um, we are able to, on a case by case, issue cards um, for the ebook access, and so people can just call us and let us know. And the reason for that, I mean, one of the main reasons for that is some of our books are worth you know, thousands of dollars and, um, not to, you know, and then, but ebooks, there's really no risk. We want people to have access. So, um, that's always an issue that we're discussing, but that's uh, a step that we just took in the past couple months to give more access to people. So if, if you have patrons that want to do some online research through our ebook collection, which is with Lexus right now, but it's great, um, have them give us a call. And and if you get you want to and we'll we need to do end up because we are at the top of the hour just past it. But if you need a library card, can you apply for that online? Yeah. Yep. We have. Let's see. Where I think. Um, probably I'm going to go. If you just want to send me that information, I'll make sure to include yeah. it in our follow up and um on the recording so people can get the instructions. So. Um, it, there's another privilege of being a librarian. You can get a library yeah. card for the State Law Library, and I'm going to put a plug in for the Montana State Library also licenses a number of databases that you can access with um, a library card, and those are available for state employees and librarians and even library trustees. So, yeah, you should have a I'm going to get myself a state law library card and everybody attending here should as well. Uh, I'm going to have to wrap it up. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, this has been a great, we can both, we can all stay online, but I'm going to end our recording now and thank, after I thank you and Alex for sharing these great resources.